Now let's talk a little bit about asymmetric information. That's when one party usually has more information than the other. It's not symmetric, asymmetric. Now, there's a lot of vocab words kind of that you'll learn that it's kind of, uh, people really tend to confuse these two. Adverse selection and moral hazard. Most students kind of don't know the difference between the, these two. It kind of seems like something about, you know, uh, stuff going wrong. And they both are related to something going wrong when there's asymmetric information. But let's look at what the difference is and how to, you know, really treat them in the real world. So let's keep a consistent example. Let's say you are thinking about, you own a health insurance company, okay? And uh, let's say you know that some people are healthy, you know, they exercise, they eat well, and so they're less likely to get certain diseases, and so you're less likely to have to spend a lot of money on them, right? Uh, versus some people are unhealthy, and so you're expecting to probably spend more money on them because, again, when you're the health insurance company, you're now kind of, you're paying for all their medical uh, bills and they're just giving you a monthly premium or something. So you're kind of taking their risk for them if you're the insurance company. Now, what if you knew that you were able to distinguish between healthy and unhealthy people? Then you'd kind of want to charge the healthy people a lower premium, right? Because that's the fair thing to do if you're, you know, spending less uh, money for them. So you charge them less versus charge more for the unhealthy people. So let's say you just said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to ask people. I'm going to have them fill out a survey asking them, hey, you know, uh, how many times a week do you exercise? How many times uh, do you have vegetables uh, every week? And stuff like that. Now, here's the problem with that. People lie. Information isn't perfect. They have the information. You don't. That's why it's asymmetric. You, the insurance company, don't. But the person who's, you know, being insured, they kind of know whether they're healthy or not. But they know that you're going to charge less money if they're uh, if, if you think that they're healthy, so that's why everyone's going to lie and say that they're healthy. So if you sort of overlooked that and sort of gave everybody the, and you're like, oh, I guess everybody's healthy and charge them the low premium. Well, now you're actually having to pay on average more because some people have, are unhealthy, right? Uh, even though they lied. But that's called adverse selection. Adverse just kind of means bad. So this is bad selection. You selected the bad people to get the sort of a healthy person pr low premium, but they're really unhealthy. So that's when you made a bad decision. Now, one easy way to kind of get rid of that is rather than relying on them reporting the truth, is screening. If you were able to screen everybody, meaning if you were to just say, hey, you know what? Rather than you filling out a survey, how about I'll just do like a physical, like I'll just hire a doctor to do a physical for all my, uh, you know, people that I'm insuring, and the doctor will tell me how healthy they are, and based on that, I'll know. And so then there's, you, there's no adverse selection anymore. So screening is one way. Another is signaling. That's where the, you know, the client themselves, you know, the person being insured can kind of signal that, hey, look, I really am healthy. I've been in all these 10K races and whatnot. So either way, screening or signaling can fix adverse selection. Moral hazard, though, that's a little, that's like even a slightly deeper problem. Let's say you were able to avoid adverse selection, meaning you got all the healthy people uh, to pay the low premium and you were able to get the, uh, uh, the unhealthy people to pay the high premium, right? And now all is good with the world. The doctors confirmed this person's healthy, so you can charge them a low premium and they probably won't have to go to the doctor a lot. So you're like, yay. But now that person, that otherwise healthy person, now they go home, first they have having health insurance and they're thinking, I guess it's okay if I skip the gym today because, hey, worst case, if I get a little sick, I mean, I don't have to pay any medical bills. So, I mean, a lot of people don't think like that, but a few might. And either way, when somebody does, that's called a moral hazard. So a moral hazard, to generalize, is whenever anybody becomes riskier just because they have uh, insurance. Now, it could go beyond health insurance. You could say if somebody's like, you know, oh, now that they've bought cars, so like an otherwise safe driver, if you didn't have health, uh, like car insurance, you drive really safely because I don't want to pay $10,000 in car repairs. I'm driving really safely. But now you're thinking if you have uh, car insurance and it's all covered anyways, you're thinking, ah, I might as well speed a little bit. Worst case, if I, as long as I don't die, I mean, the car company is going to pay for, the insurance company is going to pay for all the damages. So either way, it changes your behavior and uh, makes you more risky. Unlike adverse selection where it's not really changing your behavior, that's just you not identifying who's whom. Here, this is saying it's gonna make everyone uh, riskier.